On March 3, 1944, in East Anglia, England, Lieutenant William Overstreet sat in his quarters, writing a letter to his sweetheart in Virginia. Outside, ground crews worked under floodlights, attaching strange brown paper wrap fuel tanks beneath the wings of his P-51 Mustang. These were not metal tanks, but disposable drop tanks made of compressed paper and plastic resin. Innovations born not from cutting-edge materials, but from necessity, British ingenuity, and American scale. Dubbed paper bags by some, these 108-gallon tanks were deceptively simple, made in converted newspaper factories, and held together by glue used for furniture. Yet, they were about to rewrite the rules of aerial warfare. Just a few months prior, on October 14, 1943, Black Thursday, the U.S. Air Force had suffered catastrophic losses over Germany. Bombers, lacking long-range escort, were torn apart by German fighters. The P-47 Thunderbolts couldn't reach past 375 miles with standard tanks. A solution was desperately needed. In England, Colonel Cass Howe and his team were already working with the British on something radical, non-metallic fuel tanks. Britain, short on aluminum, had experimented with paper tanks to save critical resources. But the Americans saw a different advantage, weight. A paper tank weighed one-third of its metal counterpart, allowing more fuel and thus greater range. The first combat test in February 1944 showed promise. And then, with the arrival of the P-51 Mustang, the equation changed entirely. When married to paper tanks, the Mustang's range extended 850 miles, far enough to escort bombers all the way to Berlin and back. On March 4, 1944, Overstreet and his fellow pilots flew into history, punching through what had once been considered impossible. For the first time, single-engine fighters reached Berlin and returned. The Luftwaffe was caught off guard, and morale on both sides shifted instantly. American fighters over Berlin were a shock the Germans had not prepared for. These paper drop tanks were masterpieces of practical design, constructed from layered craft paper, bonded with phenolic resin, shaped over wooden forms, and coated with silver paint. They were lightweight, strong, and effective, filled just before flight. They lasted five hours, enough for a round trip to Berlin. Their aerodynamic profile was superior to metal tanks, and when hit, they tore rather than exploded. Built in places like Bowater Lloyd's paper mills and even British homes, these tanks were cheap, efficient, and disposable. Skeptics in the U.S. declared them unfeasible, but the 8th Air Force was already proving them wrong. 15,000 tanks used without a single failure due to construction. As 1944 progressed, these paper tanks became standard. The Mustang, once a capable fighter, became a war-winning weapon. Pilots like Don Gentile, John Meyer, and Francis Gabreski flew deep into Germany with them. Bombers that once flew alone were now protected. Interception rates plummeted. Losses dropped from catastrophic to manageable. German morale and strategy crumbled. The Luftwaffe, once masters of the air, could no longer safely scramble fighters. Even the formidable German aces acknowledged a turning point. The Americans had solved the range problem. The war had changed. The logistics were equally revolutionary. Paper tanks required one-tenth the shipping space of metal tanks. Hundreds would be flown in flattened, stacked bundles. Ground crews could unwrap and mount them in minutes. From D-Day to the Battle of the Bulge, these tanks ensured constant air cover. They allowed repeated sorties, deep penetration, and flexible operations. On snowy fields in Belgium or hastily built strips in France, they delivered range, reliability, and tactical superiority. The environmental legacy, unappreciated at the time, was notable. While metal tanks became long-term hazards, paper tanks biodegrade within months. French farmers, decades later, 
praise their minimal impact compared to the twisted metal debris left behind. From a production standpoint, the paper tank program was a marvel of Allied cooperation. British innovation met American mass production. The lamination techniques, resin formulas, and quality control standards laid foundations for post-war manufacturing, aerospace components, and even electronics. Combat reports tell the story best. Lieutenant Robert Powell flew to the Rhine, dropped tanks, fought me 262s, refueled, and flew a second mission, all in one day. Lieutenant Urban Drew flew 1,400 miles round trip and shot down two jets. Captain Lewis Kurds confirmed the same tanks worked in Pacific humidity as well as European cold. In final missions over Czechoslovakia and Hitler's retreat, paper tanks remained under Mustang wings, symbols of reach, power, and innovation. The war in the air wasn't won by better fighters alone. It was won by range. And range came from disposable fuel tanks made of paper. These tanks were born in newspaper factories, carried under the wings of American fighters, and dropped in fields across Europe. Their impact was measurable. 8,000 aircrew lives saved. 79% increase in escort range. Luftwaffe defense is shattered. They were proof that sometimes victory doesn't come from exotic technology, but from creative application of the simplest ideas, executed at scale when it matters most. When General Doolittle called the paper drop tank the most important tactical development of the air war in Europe, he wasn't exaggerating. It wasn't glamorous. It didn't make headlines. But it worked perfectly, reliably, decisively. And behind every tank was a worker who never saw combat, but helped win the war. A tank made of paper, glue, and ingenuity carried the fuel for victory and proved that sometimes the simplest tools can deliver the most profound results. Today, most of those paper drop tanks are gone, disintegrated by time, rain, and wind. But their legacy remains in the missions they made possible and the lives they saved. At museums and veterans' reunions, You'll find fragments, a rusted metal fitting, a faded photograph, or a pilot's quiet story about flying farther than anyone thought possible. These tanks weren't just tools. They were symbols of what could be achieved when urgency meets ingenuity. In a war defined by massive machines and metal might, it was compressed paper, soaked in resin, crafted by civilian hands, that made all the difference. The paper drop tank story reminds us that great victories aren't always forged by the most glamorous weapons or the flashiest inventions. Sometimes they're built in silence, in shifts, by ordinary people using extraordinary resolve. In a world looking for high-tech solutions, the lesson remains clear. Innovation is not about complexity. It's about effectiveness. And in 1944, a paper tank carried more than just fuel. 